This video is brought to you by Nebula. Today, Putin and Kim Jong-un plan a meeting. Cuba uncovers a Russian human trafficking operation. Finland's opposition leader is accused of having neo-Nazi connections. And a war crimes trial involving oil executives begins in Sweden. From TLDR News, this is your daily briefing for Tuesday the 5th of September 2023. This morning, it was reported that Russian leader Vladimir Putin plans to meet with North Korean leader Kim Jong-un later in the month. There's been considerable speculation in recent weeks and months about the possibility that North Korea either is or will supply Russia with weapons to aid in its fight against Ukraine. Russia has consistently denied this claim. At the time of writing, neither North Korea nor Russia have commented on what the meeting could be about. However, a US official has told CBS that the meeting will include the possibility of North Korea providing the US with weapons and support. Others also fear that as part of the meeting, Russia could promise to provide North Korea with weapons in the future, at a time when Pyongyang most needs them. The US claims that this wouldn't be the first time that the Russian government has tried to reach an agreement to receive supplies from North Korea. National Security Council spokesperson John Kirby claimed that Russia's defence minister, Sergei Shogu, tried to convince Pyongyang to sell artillery ammunition to Russia in a visit to North Korea. About this visit in particular, though, it's unknown how Mr Kim will arrive in Russia or where the meeting will take place, although it's rumoured that he could arrive in an armoured train. In other Russian news today, Russian General Sergei Sorovikin has been pictured alive after many weeks of speculation that he may have been killed. When the Wagner mutiny was happening, Sorovikin told Wagner's fighters to return to base and obey Vladimir Putin. However, in the days after the mutiny, speculation grew about what he knew and when. It was only a few weeks ago that the leader of the Wagner group, Evgeny Prigozhin, was killed in a plane crash on a domestic flight in Russia. Fingers have been pointed at Putin and the Kremlin, although Putin has not admitted this. The photo today looks Surovikin at home looking healthy with his family, ending any speculation that Putin has tried to exact his revenge on Surovikin in a similar way. There's more on the way, but be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to make the daily briefing part of your daily routine. Or just search for us on your podcast app to listen along. Cuba's foreign ministry says it's uncovered a human trafficking network operation from Russia designed to coerce Cubans into fighting for Russia in Ukraine. The ministry statement gives few details, but says that Cuban authorities are working to neutralise and dismantle the network, adding that criminal proceedings have been initiated. The foreign ministry goes on to say that Cuba's enemies are promoting disinformation, seeking to present the country as an accomplice to these actions, which it categorically rejects. Reuters news agency cites a Russian newspaper in late May as saying that a number of Cuban citizens had signed contracts with the Russian forces in return for citizenship, though it's not clear if this recent statement from the Cuban foreign ministry is related. So that's what's been happening in Cuba today. Let's move and discuss what's been happening in relation to Finland. The Finnish opposition leader has, this morning, tried to distance himself from pictures that came to light a few weeks ago that shows him wearing a mask surrounded by others performing a Nazi salute. Ati Lindman and four of his friends are shown in the image at high school, wearing balaclavas and holding a fake handgun, while some perform the salute. The scandal came to light around the same time that Finland's finance minister, Wilhelm Junila, was forced to stand down over Nazi terminology and the use of the number 88, which is a numeric code for Heil Hitler. Lindman was recently elected as the leader of the Social Democratic Party, or SDP, taking over from former leader and former prime minister, Sanna Marin. Unfortunately for the SDP, this isn't the only scandal that they've had to contend with recently. The party selected 33-year-old Mikhail Nakalajavi as the party secretary. In 2006, when he was a teenager, he beat a cat to death with a shovel and was convicted for animal cruelty. A trial has begun in Sweden of two former Swedish oil executives accused of complicity in war crimes in Sudan between 1999 and 2003, when the African country was in the midst of a brutal civil war. Ex-CEO Ian Lundin and ex-chairman Alex Schneider of what was then called London Oil are accused of asking the Sudanese government to secure one of the company's potential oil fields, knowing that the army would do so by force. 
Prosecutors have said that this makes the executives complicit in the atrocities carried out by the Sudanese army and allied militias against civilians. The defendants and the company reject the accusations, and Alex Schneider also unsuccessfully challenged the jurisdiction of the court as he's neither a Swedish citizen nor a resident. It will be the longest trial in Swedish history, with proceedings scheduled to last until early 2026, an 80,000-page prosecution case and 90 witnesses. The two defendants face jail terms if convicted, and the company, which has since been renamed multiple times and has sold off most of its businesses, faces a confiscation order of more than $200 million. The conflict that the charges relate to is Sudan's civil war, which lasted from 1983 to 2005 and ultimately resulted in the independence of South Sudan in 2011. Former Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir is wanted by the International Criminal Court for genocide and war crimes that he denies. To end this main section with some uplifting news, we look to South Africa, where the NGO African Parks has announced plans to rewild more than 2,000 southern white rhinos over the next 10 years. The organisation has taken over a 7,800 hectare property in South Africa's northwest province, which is the site of a captive breeding operation and 2,000 rhinos. African parks say that they'll rewild these rhinos to well-managed and secure areas, with a goal of de-risking the future of the species, whose numbers have fallen below 13,000. That's not all either. There are other ongoing stories around the world that don't always come up in our daily briefing. For example, the situation of increasing tensions between the US and China in the Pacific, which we actually discussed in the daily discussion. There, myself and Rory sat down to discuss the intricacies of this conflict to help us better understand what's really going on. In fact, we release these daily discussions, <laughs> well, daily, covering a huge variety of topics in a more analytical and detailed way than is possible in these main videos. The entire series is available exclusively on our streaming service Nebula. If you've been thinking about signing up, then I have some good news. For a limited time, we're offering lifetime memberships. Yep, if you sign up for a lifetime membership, you get access for as long as both you and Nebula exist. Plus, you're also funding new original content from your favourite creators. In fact, if you sign up using our link, then a third of that money goes straight to us, and the rest goes into the pool to develop new Nebula originals with bigger budgets and better production. Now, it's clearly a lot of money, and honestly, the best value plan is still the annual one. But if you really want to support independent creators and help us make even bigger projects, then this is the best option. Again, do make sure you use our link so that they know that you're supporting TLDR. And also, this offer only lasts until the end of the month, with no guarantee it'll ever be offered again. So if you're interested, this is your opportunity. Anyway, thanks for your support and for signing up to Nebula.